Hello and welcome to Mapping Fault Lines News Click Show, where we discuss major geopolitical issues across the world. In today's story, we are going to be talking about breaking developments in Palestine, where Israel has launched an all-out assault on Gaza, at least via airstrikes. The airstrikes beginning on Monday, but even before that, there were invasions of the Al-Aqsa compound. There has been uh, attacks on protesters in Sheikh Jarrah in occupied East Jerusalem. So these are not just uh, attacks on Gaza. These are not just the attacks on Gaza that began on Monday, but actually a series of incidents over weeks where Israel has sort of upped uh, the escalated the situation massively. And we have with us Prabir Prakash to talk about this. Prabir, so uh, as far as we see now, there have been continuous days of bombing in Gaza. There have been, uh, of course, raids by Israel in other towns in the occupied West Bank as well. But the Gaza raids being the most significant uh, escalation of uh, military assaults by Israel in recent times. Of course, the uh, number of deaths keeps increasing almost every few hours. The latest reports say somewhere around 85. It could be much more by the time even this video comes out. And we've also seen a lot of threatening comments. So right now, how do we see the position on the ground, especially in the line light of what Israel has been mobilizing and announcing? I think we have reached the most dangerous point post-2014 in Palestine, occupied territories, as well as in West Asia. Today, it looks like we face a possibility of a new war that Israel may launch on Gaza. Now, on the question of Gaza, it's not that the Israel is bombing, only bombing Gaza. Gaza has actually been hitting back and it has also launched missiles, including Tel Aviv. So this is the first time that we see a number of missiles penetrating the iron, iron dome and hitting Israel. They already have six casualties. Maybe numbers may, again, as you say, numbers may again grow. But this is something that they have not faced for quite some time because they felt that the iron dome really protected them from the low grade rockets that came from Gaza, which really were metal canisters filled with some explosives and with some uh, fuel. So those are very crude rockets which used to go or which used to be fired earlier. The first time Hamas are in the fray and that qualitatively changes the situation because Hamas have obviously the greater capability, both militarily and in terms of the stockpile they have of being able to launch uh, missiles or rockets at, at Israel. So given that situation, that it is not going to be as painless as a thing. That is one. Again, in the last Gaza war, 2014 war, Israel really faced a rather difficult physical situation. That the penetration into Gaza, which they used to think was an easy walkover, wasn't so. And they did face a much harder hand-to-hand -hand combat in uh, Gaza, the Gaza city, which is what they're targeting. And that men means that if they enter Gaza again, which is what they're threatening, then this would have, could have serious consequences in terms of casualties. Second, if they continue with just an aerial bombardment, and you talked about the number of people killed, including children, high-rise apartment buildings, which have been demolished, but also the desalination plant, which provides portable drinking water to Gaza, has also been de destroyed. As it happens during all these wars, it is the infrastructure which goes down first, which is electricity and water. And then, of course, the people are at the mercy of disease and other things. So this is the, the likely scenario, for, as far as I can think, is that Israel won't get into... Gaza very quickly. They will try to bomb Gaza, try to bomb the, uh, the Hamas, uh, other forces over there, and then see whether they can stop the barrage of strikes coming out of Gaza. And as I said, they're not small in number at the moment, and they seem to be taking some serious hits, including on Tel Aviv. So if that con continues, then Israel will also found, find it very difficult then not to enter Gaza. And that's completely an unknown territory, what happens after that. And while it is true, Israel is of course the far bigger military power in the conflict in Gaza. And Gaza is by international laws definition is occupied territories because the, the skies are controlled by Israel. 
The borders are controlled by Israel. They do not have access to the sea. Any, any entry or exit out of uh, Gaza is at the moment effectively controlled by Israel in collusion, of course, with Egypt. So given that, that anything that gets into Gaza has to come through Israel or Israel's allowing it to come through, in technical international law terms, it's an occupied territory. Otherwise, it would, it would have you know, acceptance, it would be able to import things which it can't. And Israel has also ac really accepted that Palestine is occupied territories by opposing the entry of PLA into the, in, in the United Nations. So Gaza is an occupied territory and therefore Israel today, if it has to re-enter Gaza, it's not going to be easy for it. And without re-entering Gaza, I don't know how they can stop the bombardment that is taking place. The larger issue is, of course, the provoked it by what you said earlier. They provoked it by believing that Jerusalem is theirs to do as they please, as far as the occupied territories are concerned, which is the West Bank today, that there, there is nothing that they can, they can do which others can oppose or resist. So they want to change the demography of Jerusalem itself. It's been a long ongoing project, it's nothing new. And Sheikh Jarrah is of course the, uh, the flashpoint today because it's been something which they have been trying to get, take people out of, of Palestinian origin, out of that, Palestinians out of Sheikh Jarrah and then get the settlers in. That's been the ongoing battle. But this time, this has been much worsened by the fact Al-Aqsa, which is one of the holiest spots of Islam, or Islam was attacked physically by security forces of Israel. And the fact that there are flash grenades used, all that has had very bad repercussions in the entire uh, Arab world. And I think therefore it is created a situation where the uh, Israelis are find it hard to put, how to emerge from it. I don't think they want to get into a war. A lot of this is really jockeying for position internally, the kind of political uh, realignment that are taking place. Four elections have taken place in Israel and there is still no solution to who runs Israel. So by default, you still have Netanyahu as the prime minister running Israel and deciding what he wants to do. And as we know, war is always very useful. A heightened state of war, the possibility of war, is very useful for an incumbent government. So this is where I think the situation stands, but a very, very difficult situation because I don't see how each side can come out of it without getting it into a further, uh, into further conflict. Absolutely. Right, Prabir, also in this context, uh, it will be so good to look at uh, the situation on the ground, especially in the context of uh, earlier promises that were made in the 90s, when there was some hope of, you know, a two-state solution, when the Oslo process was going on. And over the years, we've seen Israel's apartheid policies, its occupation policies intensify Israel, breaking all uh, these prom uh, all, all the promises it made, all the promises and commitments that in, international, in the international framework that were made to give Palestinians a contiguous state. So uh, right now, especially when we see what hap what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah, where people are being expelled uh, and the, the attempt is to build more settlements and give Jewish settlers more illegal structures for them. So how do we see the whole inter the pro process, the international process that was there and what is its future now? Well, you know, the two state solution has been dead for quite some time. And the reality that it is an apartheid state is emerging very clearly. I don't see how anybody can deny it because Israel has said that it is not going to let West Bank go. Effectively, that's what its position is. And it is clear that the Palestinian people do not have rights in Israel. Occupied West Bank has no rights whatsoever in Israel under Israel law. And they're not even getting vaccine. So this is the situation at the moment. Yes. Hospitals and nurses, yes, but for the average population in the West Bank, there is no vaccine even available. So, given all of this, and Israel has, you know, praised itself in the skies, also something which has been uh, applauded uh, by the Western media that it's the most vaccinated country in the world, except when you look at the 
occupied territories, which now they agree is a part of uh, is a greater Israel, which they're never going to let go. So Israel having declared itself the, the rightful owners of Palestine, the, or the larger Palestine, and then denying Palestinian population rights, democratic rights, which a citizen should, should, should have, they have all made it into an apartheid state by all declarations and by law. Now, they may deny it. And there is, again, a huge lobby in the West, which, you know, given its historical complicity on oppression of the Jews, now would like to bend backwards to say any criticism of Israel is anti, uh, is not simply uh, anti-Israel, it's actually anti-Jewish. And therefore, it becomes something which is under law, they have to stop. So any criticism of Israel as a country, any criticism of its leaders, then gets into that kind of scenario in the West. So given that complicity of the West in the creation of Israel, and it's not only its uh, military survival, but also seeing that it is very heavily armed against all its powers nearby. You have to take a look at the map and you will see that all the countries on its contiguous borders have absolutely no military power comparable to what Israel has, except Egypt. And that's why post-1973, when Egypt almost created the situation that they, the, the, the Jewish state, the state of Israel was at risk that after that they made peace with Egypt. But that is not the situation vis-a-vis -vis Syria, Jordan, or obviously the Palestinian population. So given that, they also have this problem that what do they do? So if they want to flex their muscles, they need an enemy. That is the way the internal politics of Israel also works. And therefore they fought with Lebanon in 2006, I think was the last war that they fought in Lebanon. And after that, they found that getting into Lebanon, beating up the Lebanese and coming back wasn't that easy. And they really got a bloody nose from Hezbollah over there. Given that, then the thought be Gaza is the next easy one. Give them blows, come back, and you will then win the next election. Now, that is the also what is, is also the scenario that is taking place. That Israel shift to the right is a part of this process that they don't see there is an enemy who can contest with what they're doing. Therefore, the Palestinian people's rights do not matter. And increasingly the shift, not only to a one state solution, but to a one state apartheid solution, and which is a shift more, much more openly to the right. I think that is a trajectory it is following. So the Palestinian people have absolutely no hopes of getting an independent Palestine state. So the question is, what happens to Gaza and what happens to the Palestinian people? And do we then fight for a secular, democratic, greater Palestine, if you will, or a state of all people in the borders of what is the existing occupied territories and Israel? Now, that I think is the issue that uh, is coming up, that will come up. That's an issue that history has to resolve. But at the moment, unfortunately, that's not where we are. All we have is a failed promise of a two-state solution, which has not been adhered to, which has been broken. Promises have been broken time and again. And under the direct patronage of the Western powers, of course, the United States is the key among them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching your screen.